We've caught up with Udenidi Stalin. So your message to the voters, sir. Your message to the voters. Uh, please come and vote. And uh, sir, uh, how confident are you this time for the DMK? Uh, we're very confident. And uh, what is your message? India Bloc, will you will you think this is, there's going to be a change yeah, in the central yeah. government? Yeah, definitely. We are hoping for a big margin victory. Sir, so your message to the voters, sir. Your message to the voters. Uh, please come and vote. And uh, sir, uh, how confident are you this time for the DMK? Uh, we're very confident. And uh, what is your message? India Bloc, will you will you think this is, there's going to be a change yeah, in the central yeah. government? Yeah, definitely. We are hoping for a big margin victory. Hoping for a big margin of victory, Purnima Murli asking those questions even as Udenidhi Stalin uh, casting his ballot there and then walking out. Uh, Shekhar Ayer, how confident are you of the DMK doing or repeating what they did the last time around or do you think they will do better? Do you see this as a three-cornered fight, Tamil Nadu? Yes, it has become a three-cornered fight and uh, everyone has been saying it is advantage BJP because, BJ I mean advantage BJP in some selected areas. But largely, largely because the result they had in 2019 when DMK was in the opposition. Hmm. Now, this time DMK is the ruling party and since 2021, there have been several anti-income issues working against the DMK. And hmm. we have, as we have seen, you know, out of those 38 seats that they had won last time, at least in half of them, they had more than 50% votes. So the big question this time is, is also about how much is, I mean, how... Uh, capable is the DMK of retaining that the goodwill they had when they were in the opposition during the last looks of elections. Now they are ruling party with several ministers facing corruption issue mm. and corruption is a big talked about issue. I mean mm. the issue of the corruption involving several family members of the, uh, uh, the state ministers, DMK mm. functionaries right up to the district level. A point, I mean an issue that has been exploited by the BJP, an issue that was brought to the fore during Annabalai's Padhyatra. So you can see that this time the BJP is hoping to increase the vote share and probably win one or two seats and set the tone for 2026 election. Right. For the DMK, it has to show that it is retaining the same capacity that it had in 2019. Right. Now to all, all our guests and also in studio, if you can just go full frame on the vote matrix matrix that we just put out. If you can go and we read this year on year. Uh, and if you can call that out. Now, this is interesting and this is a Tamil Nadu vote matrix. 2004 till 2019 and then after that 2021. If we look at the DMK, they have never touched 40%. The DMK has never touched 40%. It's the ADMK that has breached the 40% mark or got close to it at least thrice. 38% in 2011. 44 or 45 percent in 2014 and 40 percent in 2016. Now who's on the wane? It was the DMK that was on the wane to 19 percent and despite them falling so much, the DMK still did not get more across more than 35 percent in 2019. So if we look at this trend, are there votes to pinch for somebody who emerges as a challenger? So Zaka, Nalin and uh, Rahul Wayne here in the studio and then we'll take that out to Veer Sangvi also. No, yes. But, uh, you know, uh, can we put that graphic back? For me, the most telling part of that is the BJP's vote share. 3.5% hmm. in 2019 Lok Sabha, 2.5% in 2021 Vidhan Sabha and you are basically, you need a 10x fold if you were to compete with the DMK or even for that matter with the ADMK. Let's assume the competition for the BJP is to ensure that the ADMK vote, a substantial chunk of the ADMK vote votes en masse for the BJP. That's the only way they can grow in that state. Even at its lowest, which was 2019 Lok Sabha, the ADMK had almost six times the vote of the BJP. Yes. Right? So that is where the, the, the real fight is. That ultimately, as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned, the BJP has to grow at the expense of the AIDMK. And EPS realizes this. He realizes this is a fa battle for survival. Because if he loses this time around, even if he doesn't win a single seat, but if his vote share goes below that of the BJP, if the BJP can demonstrate, even without winning a single seat, if the BJP in Tamil Nadu can demonstrate that they can get as much or more vote share than AIDMK, then the 2026 battle is going to be DMK versus BJP, not DMK versus ADMK. And that's why EPS is also fighting this battle as though this is a battle for survival for his party. Because if he loses this in terms of vote share, even without winning or losing a single seat, if he loses just the vote share battle, that's yeah. the end of the ADMK. In, yeah. in this contest, it's a real contest of ideologies now. 
So there's a non-Dravidian and there's a Dravidian. Actually, the AIDMK has two problems. Number one, relevance, ideological relevance, because if you are talking about non-Dravidian, Dravidian, then it sort of gets subsumed in the DMK. If you are talking about non-Dravidian, then the BJP comes in and occupies the space that the AIDMK might give up, right? So there's that one issue. Of course, it doesn't also have a charismatic leader like... Uh, like J.J. Lalita was. There's a factional feud that has ripped into the air DMK and at some level weakened the party. Now, constantly we keep coming back to the vote share of the BJP, whether it can, and you know, you go back to the Bengal example. It works, but it also doesn't work. The Bengal example works only because you can see a growth glide path. So, uh, the BJP... But there again, had, Raul, yeah, the, reason, again, the, reason the reason why the BJP did well in Bengal is that the CPM vote almost en no, masse... more than that. When more the, than uh, that, the there was also room to polarise. Sure. You see, there was a Hindutva engine that was firing, CA, True. call it what you want to, so you polarise. Yeah. That doesn't really exist. No, that Raul, 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 the DMK also has Hindus voting for it. Yeah, Let's it not forget. And caste Hindus also. So, look, from a glide path trajectory, yes, it works. You can assume that from 7% to 17 to 40, that is 1 to 2 seats to 18 seats, it can happen. You know, the BJP can grow. But ideologically, will it be able to connect? See, see that's I mean, the, the question. Same ideological, the here, ideological uh, tent poles that you talked about, like you said, like the, the Dravidian and non-Dravidian or nationalists, so, so India first. This is something which is now percolated on ground yeah, in Tamil Nadu as part of the election. Is Nalin Mehta saying something? Yeah. Uh, I want to add to this debate. See, um, uh, Rahul mentioned West Bengal. There are three or four states where the BJP in the past, in the last seven or eight years, has come from nowhere and has become a player. West Bengal is one of them. Telangana is another one. Tamil Nadu is now... Possibly mm. a third one. Tripura. Um, uh, Tripura. Uh, now, the BJP model in each of these has been different. In West Bengal and in Telangana, it emerged as the, as the alternative. For mm. anybody who was anti-incumbency, anybody who didn't like the state government or the regional player in power, it went there. So, in West Bengal, like Zaka, you said, the CPM vote shifted here, right? In Telangana, it was anybody who didn't, who didn't like uh, KCR. Uh, and, and Tripura was a different case. In Tamil Nadu, it's a totally different kind of a battle because it's, a to it's an ideological battle of a kind BJP has not fought elsewhere. Because yeah. here, you are talking about the legacy of the Periyar movement. You're talking about the Dravidian movement. Uh, both DMK and ADMK are part of the same template. Uh, they follow the same ideology. The BJP is talking about a new kind of post periyar politics and with harking back to Tamil tradition. And Tamil Nadu is a very religious state, uh, even though the politics yes. of Tamil Nadu has been largely outside of religion. So I think what BJP is trying to create is a new template which will take time and is really fighting the next election here. The other, so the actually, actually, the point is the other interesting point is to revive, is revive the Congress poll. Correct. Yeah, you exactly. See, the pre 1967 Seven, yeah. Yes, 67 Congress poll. Is where the you BJP know, is trying to start. Just one anecdote before, before yeah, you take yeah, it away. Yeah. So I was covering Tamarisai Sandurajan's campaign in, in Chennai South, and she went to this place called Kamaraj Bhavan. That's where Kamaraj was, was laid to rest. Kamaraj, of course, the legendary stalwart Congress chief minister. And she said, you know, neither Congress nor the Dravidian parties have cared for this man. And he was the tallest <laughs> chief minister of that state, yes. you know, before MGR. So there is again a trying to sort of assimilate yeah. older, you know, non Dravidian icons as part of the BJP's narrative. And the the other point I want to make is that this so which, important which? is this ideological positioning of the BJP in Tamil Nadu that this battle, unlike other states, yeah. has not been fought only in Tamil Nadu, it's been fought nationally. Look at the symbol in, in the parliament. Yeah. You, 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 look at, you look at the Ram temple and, and, and the design of it. You look, you look at the idol itself. Uh, I mean, this is the centre of the BJP. Somnath, Tamil Sangam, there are so many things that have happened and pushing Tamil as a language. There is a lot that's been done culturally to root back and say Tamil culture is integral to Bharatiya Itihasa and Bharatiya's way of life. But more importantly, if you look at Anna Malai, if you look mm. at the BJP, they are not berating the ADMK. They are only taking on the DMK and its allies. The argument and the fight on political lexicon on ground for the rallies, whereas the ADMK is going after the DMK and the BJP. But the BJP is focused and saying, I want to fight only on the anti-DMK vote.